So uh, if everybody is here for marketing and membership, we'll get started. And I'm hoping that I see Katie is back so she can help me watch the chat. Uh, yes, but what I, I am wanna, here for you. What I would like to start out with is I would like to have everybody either uh, either using the reaction feature of Zoom or in your window, I want everybody to raise their hand. Okay, we've, the, the, the pictures are changing all over the place. Okay, so now I want to know if you actually have the title VP of Marketing and Public Relations. If, if you have that title, keep your hand up. Everybody else can take their hand down. Okay, of those people that actually have the title, I see one hand up. Oh, I see two hands up. Okay, uh, have either one of you had the position for longer than two years? Okay, Jason has had the position. No. And you have not. No. So you are my victim. <laughs> so my first name is Mary Margaret. If you want to use me by my name, Mary Margaret. Okay. Basically, what I want to do is I'm going to ask you 10 questions. Okay. And I'm going to write down things as we go. I'm and, a newbie too, by the way. Excuse me? I'm a newbie also. Okay. Well, uh, let's let's do ladies first. Uh, the last time I taught this, it took three hours. I've got sixty minutes, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have to go through this pretty well. So, uh, Mary Margaret, the first thing I would like to ask you is, what is your understanding of the Leadership Academy? What is it that you think this event is going to be? Um, I think I was looking forward to being able to receive. Um, kind of mentoring um, experience from others who've been in um, barber shopping for years. Like I've been just under two years singing with Chilliwack Harmony Chorus. And um, I was, you know, I have a little understanding about, you know, getting our, the name of our chapter and what we do in the community out there. We are a community performing group. And um, yeah, I want ideas. I mean, outside of me, I've already gone to the local newspaper last year during Valentine's, and they did an article. Um, I have access to being able to go to lo local okay. radio. So anyway, yeah. Okay. Well, there's we, you, there's nine more questions. So, <laughs> uh, what? Uh, why did you decide to join this particular event? Oh, today. Yeah. Um, is our leader Jerry Warden, who's our director, um, reminded and advised um, us in these positions that okay, this so would be you, beneficial. So, okay. And uh, and what do you think that you're gonna gain from attending, you personally? Well, I think community, like with other people, with other chapter leaders and in, in the organization and yeah, start to get ideas that are shared. Okay. Next question. Did the cost of this event encourage or discourage you from attending? I didn't pay anything. Okay, so it didn't deter you at all. <laughs> no. Free is good. Now, would you attend this if it cost $500? No. Would you attend it if it cost $5? Yes. Okay. We're almost to the end. Uh, was it difficult for you to find or join the meeting? No. I I, I got on on my phone, and then I, I immediately after that got a hold of my tech guy through school on my computer, and he walked me through some updates, so now I'm back on my laptop. Okay. And um, if you find satisfaction in the event today, would you recommend it to a member of your chapter for next year? Absolutely. Final question. How did you find out about today's event? You've already shared part of that, but would you reiterate that? Well, first of all, it came through on the uh, email, but really it was Jerry's promotion. So Jerry Borden promoted it um, at our weekly singing group. So yes. basically okay. word of mouth, right? I'd say so, yeah. Okay, I just walked you through the four Ps of marketing. Yeah. Those answers are the, those are the, the questions that I asked are the questions that you need to ask when you are consider, considering marketing for anything. If you're marketing for members, 
if you're marketing for audience, if you're marketing for anything, uh, there are four P's which uh, are referred to as the four marketing P's. I'm going to attempt, I'm never, I'm not very good at this. I'm going to attempt to share my screen with you. Some of you should have received a, um, some of you should have received an email with a copy of this uh, in PowerPoint. And, um, uh, and for those of you that don't, we're gonna try and put it on the screen very quickly. Yeah, that's working. Okay, it should look like a PowerPoint, PowerPoint now. Okay, to let you know, my name is Greg Cronlin. I am the Evergreen Chapter Marketing Advisor, and uh, I've been uh, fulfilling this particular position since 2022. And uh, I have conducted all kinds of workshops on marketing and different marketing ideas. And it all centers for me on what are called the four Ps. So on our agenda, we're gonna talk about product, we're gonna talk about price, we're gonna talk about place, we're gonna talk about promotion, and we're going to uh, uh, talk a little bit about membership. I will tell you that I'm gonna be flying through this. So take notes as you can, and uh, I'm available to, uh, to help out as much as I can. So basically, we start off by understanding our product. So if you're looking for members, that means that you understand your chapter. And everybody needs to have the same vocabulary because everybody should be talking about their chapter in the same way. So some of the stuff that you need to deal with in terms of product is what is your product? Now, it's real easy to say, well, we're a singing organization, but it goes beyond that. Yeah. Um, what is your product? Who uses it? How often do they use it? And differentiation. Has anybody got an idea of what I mean by differentiation? Sure. You know, I know that some organizations are involved in um, more competition than um, just community performance. I know we are a community performance group, so that would be my understanding. Okay. Differentiation is what makes you different from the other musical groups within your community. Okay. And so if you are, uh, if you're a barbershop group and you sing tight four part harmony and uh, you meet every Tuesday night, and um, you do two shows a year, and you can attend one convention a year, does that set you apart from the corral down the street or the community choir someplace? You, have to, you need to understand what makes you different from those people that you are around. Yeah. Once you understand your product, you're starting to understand who uses the product. So if I refer back to the questions I had, what was your understanding of Leadership Academy? That's a product question. I'm asking, I'm trying to get an idea from you what you thought the product was. Now, we who are putting it on, Katie and uh, and the district that are putting it on, we have an idea of what this is. But did you, did it translate to you? Uh, why did you decide to join the event? That's a product question. Because you looked at it as the product and you said, yeah, that's something that I could really use. <clears throat> Plus, you had something else called word of mouth, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And um, I asked you, what do you think you'd gain from attending it? Those were those were your expectations of the product. If I went on to it and I and I've said, who uses it? In our case, barber shoppers use it. How often do they use it? Once a year. What's the differentiation? Uh, we jam pack several subjects into uh, quick one hour sessions, which is not near enough for any of us. But that's kind of what we're talking about. The next element of the four Ps is price. And I asked you price questions. Did the cost of the event encourage you or discourage you? Well, since it was free, it didn't discourage you at all. However, if it was $500, you would have thought about it and might have discouraged you, right? And if it was $5, you would have said, yeah, I, I, it'd be worth five bucks. Uh, so when we're dealing with price, we have to know, is the price fixed? Is it flexible? Can, it, can we negotiate the price? Is there any hidden price? And uh, what is my buck really supporting? 
And those are questions that people that people ask. In our particular case in membership, it's a fixed price, right? So it's going to be $144 to the to the society, $41 to the to the uh, district, and it's going to be X amount of money uh, per year that goes to your chapter and your chapter dues. And that's what you're paying. The other options obviously are what does what does my money support? That's a whole different story. For us in barbershop, there are some hidden costs which are not necessarily reflected when we invite somebody to come and join us and sing with us. And that hidden cost is we wear tuxedos. We have a shirt that costs twenty five bucks. Uh, we uh, whatever else it is. Uh, we do, there are some chapters that do a capital call someplace along the line and everybody's expected to kick in an extra hundred dollars or hundred or fifty dollars or something uh, to go toward the budget. So yeah, if I come in as a guest member or a, a guest interested in membership, then I probably need to know uh, all of the costs, but you don't give it to them all at once. <laughs> you spread it out over time because you've got to get them hooked on barbershop first. And uh, are individuals who are, who are interested to sing, um, are they allowed to be encouraged to continue singing if they don't have the means to join and become a member? That, that's up to the chapter. Yeah. And the, the membership situation is going to cause an issue if you go to if you go to convention and you can test. Yeah. So if you because every person on stage has to be a member of the society in good yes. standing. But the chapter could have uh, associate people that come and sing and just enjoy just enjoy the fellowship. Yeah. What we're attempting to do is grow barbershop. So we want people singing it. We want to get people involved in it. Yeah. And growing your chapter is 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 part of that. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other the next two questions I asked was: it difficult to join the event? No, you found we had it publicized very well. So you had the you had the link to get into the Zoom meeting, so that wasn't a problem. And uh, if you found the play, if you found the event today, uh, and if you if you got every if you were satisfied with it, would you share that uh, with somebody else? That is also a question of of place, yeah. and place is location, where you <laughs> physically meet, or where you physically buy tickets, or where you physically appear. And the other side of place is the physical and emotional response that you that you bring. Uh, does your chapter leave people wanting to come back, can't wait for the next Tuesday? Or is your chapter the Tuesday habit and I have to go because there's only two leads and if I don't show up, there's not enough people to sing. But that emotional thing, because that's what we want to create is that is that family, is that fellowship. So that's a question that you put together when you are uh, when you are starting to take a look at your marketing. The final question that I asked was, how'd you find out about to, to today's event, which speaks to promotion? If we've done a good job of explaining our product, if we've done a good job of uh, dealing with price issues, and if you are if you have a fixed price, and you, uh, if you have a fixed price and there's no way that you can, that you can change it, then you might want to consider adding some kind of value to your chapter meetings themselves. And sometimes that's sometimes that's uh, kind of you kind of have to play with it a little bit in order to figure it out. But if you can add some kind of value that also enhances people and invites them to come back and reminds them to come back. In terms of new members, we start with suspects. We suspect this person might be interested in singing in the group. Once we've identified a suspect, they become prospects. So basically we're going to take the opportunity to uh, invite them to become guests, to invite them to a performance, invite them to a uh, to a chapter meeting. But once they become prospects, your goal is to tr change the prospect into a guest. 
once they have actually become a guest and have started attending on a more regular basis, then you can present them with the idea of becoming a member of your chapter. So all of that stuff fits together, and that is the four Ps of, and that that's the fastest I've ever done it in my life. So before we go anyplace else, does anybody have any questions about that? You know, like, why do we do that? Or how do we do, how do, whatever questions you have. Quiet group. You can put it. I've been in uh, marketing for 20 years, and this is the same, it's the same uh, process, the four piece. So. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing has really changed. No. But those people that have never done this immediately jump to the fact that I have to advertise. They immediate, immediately go to promotion and they don't think about what is our product. Yeah. And what is the, what is the, what's the price to the customer? Yeah. And what's the place, emotional and physical? Uh, and you, d you figure that stuff out and then you can do your advertising and promotion. Yeah. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Um, to me, what you're saying is great. It's all promotion stuff. But um, one of the things that I have found over the years that has been very successful in taking suspects and moving them through the cycle into guests and eventually members is becoming being welcoming and being more interested in their musical background and about them personally. Instead of them coming to a meeting and say, well, we've, we've been to the district championship five times and we've had 75 members and eight quartets, blah, 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 blah. But if you talk about them, the people that feel welcome are going to come back. Well, you and, took me to where I was going next. Okay, sorry. <laughs> then, no, 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 no. I'd rather have it coming from you than from me. Mm -hmm. uh, when you are taking them through the cycle, First off, you, you kind of sort of need to know what your chapter is. And because we have a secret sauce. And I don't know how many people even understand that. We have, how many know we have a secret sauce? Okay, Glenn up there. Anybody else? We have an incredible secret sauce and we don't use it. Um, so let's go back to, let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the uh, the idea of product. You don't need to have it's it's good if the entire chapter is talking in the same way. But it doesn't have to be too much. It could be that someone says, "Well, what is your group all about?" We're a quality singing organization that specializes in community performances and fundraising for scholarships for Harmony Explosion Youth Camps. That's basically all you might need to know about a chapter. Because now you want to ask them, where do you like to sing when you're, when you're going after people? Don't ask them, do you like to sing? Because that gives you a yes or a no. But if you get, where do you like to sing? Now, all of a sudden, you can start engaging in a conversation and you can start asking them, well, you know, how often do you sing? Are you, have you ever sung in a form? Oh, yeah, I sang, in, I sang in choir in high school. But man, that was 50 years ago. Well, do you think you lost the ability? Probably not. And we can help you regain those skills that you might have lost. Uh, your product might be as simple as uh, we're a fun musical chorus that enjoys singing together, growing in fellowship and social activities. Which may, and there's a lot of older chapters that basically get together to sing and perform once in a while, and that satisfies them. And I'm in a group right now where i um, I'm the third youngest in the group, and I'm 74. And I, I think Arnie might be the, the youngest. But anyway, so we're, we're singing with uh, 80 and 90-year-olds. They would like to get together and sing and go out and perform once in a while, and it's, it's, it's not crucial to them. So they're much more fellowship, social uh, activities, uh, and they 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 keep their chops going by singing. Or you could be a chorus of energetic members striving for improvement, competition, and national recognition. Anybody here think their group's doing that? Probably. 
Uh, so you guys get to decide what it is, but once you understand the product and that now you can go out and you can present it to people and present it just exactly the way as Bob was talking, uh, engage them, find out who they are. We'll talk secret sauce in a second. David Dennison, it looks like you had a question. No, I was just giving thumbs up. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I seldom get thumbs up, so I don't recognize what they are. Uh, so, you know, basically, uh, our secret sauce is when we sing. If we sit in our rehearsal space, cloistered in a room, and we sing and sing and sing and expect someone to find us, we're fooling ourselves a lot. In the entire time I was with Harmony Kings in Federal Way, uh, which was six years, uh, we had three people in six years who said, I found you on the internet. How did you do that? Well, I was looking for a singing group. Okay, they were specifically looking for some kind of some kind of organization. But uh, a lot of what we do is just very passive and you've got to keep a presence and I'm not I'm not saying don't be on social media, don't don't hear that from me. Uh, you need to you need to do all of that stuff, but our secret sauce is in the singing. So you take your group or an ensemble from your group and you go someplace where people are passing by. You know, you don't have to take a piano, you don't have to take a guitar, you don't have to take anything. You're just taking that little that little thing that fits in the palm of your hand, blow in a pitch, and amazing people, because you can sing without a piano, without a guitar, without drums, without anything. And you go out and you sing one song. And then you watch for people that stop. And then you watch for people who are mouthing or mouthing along or singing along. And then when you finish the song, you go up and say, thank you so much for stopping. We saw you and, you know, it looked like you were mouthing the words. Where do you like to sing? And engage in a conversation. Don't hand them your business card. Because that will go where a lot of business cards go. Take their name. Can I have your name and your email address? Can I have your name and phone number? If you've engaged them in conversation, they're either going to say yes or no. And the other thing is, don't don't say, "Well, let give it to me, and I'll put it in my phone." You want to you want to put it you want to put it on a piece of paper, so it really looks like you've made some effort that you're really interested in them. So, Bob, is it is that tracking where you think it it should track? Yeah, I, I think that's part of it, and just making us feel welcome. Uh, I've been to chapters where a guest comes in and maybe they're not, maybe they haven't sung in 40 years. So they're a little off key or something. People's necks are craning, you know, and turning around and say, you know, it's a little bit higher and things like that. I mean, they need positive reinforcement because we are music education society. Right. Um, by the way, I've been having trouble with my mic. Is it fading in and out or is it okay? Okay. Um, I had other stuff written here. I changed all. I changed what I was going to do at five o'clock this morning. So, um, the other thing is that, and my light just went out. Um, the other th we can the still other, see you. <laughs> the the other thing that is extremely important is knowing where to find some information. And so we're going to try this green save thing again. And I don't know if you've been there. I'm hoping that you have been there at some point, but I'd like to introduce you to the Evergreen District website. And uh, it's evgdistrict.com. EVG District is all one word. And uh, Judy Galloway is our webmaster and she does a spectacular job of keeping things put together. Up at the top, we have home education. That's Katie's uh, Katie's page at this particular point, although she's moving on up. Uh, 
we have general news and we have uh, the timber, the green sheet, chapter leader news, so on and so forth, which are all posted on the, on the website. And we've got this thing over here called what we call M&M, which is marketing and membership. And when you go to marketing, assuming that this website will, there, okay. When you go to marketing, you're gonna find some stuff that's designed to help you. Here's a training video on how to SWAT your chapter. Any, I can't see everybody, but does anybody know what SWAT is, S-W-O-T? That would be a good thing to view. Uh, Bob does, he's been in sales for a zillion years. Uh, but uh, that would be a really good thing to take a look at. And it's a simple one by step by step and you stop it and you do an exercise and then you get a little more information, you stop it and you get an exercise and so on and so forth. SWOT is your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and your threats. But there's a training video for you. Here's one on let's talk, uh, let's talk advertising. Uh, that's my introduction as to who the heck I am. Uh, we're also tracking uh, celebrate little successes. And these are stories from actual chapters that are, they've got some stuff going on. And um, uh, we like to like, like to share some of their some of their successes and what they're doing. And you might get some ideas from that. Also, we have a complete look at chapter marketing. It's uh, eight minutes of pure treasure, uh, tre uh, terrible. <laughs> uh, it the product price place promotion thing is the <clears throat> is the groundwork. Once you've learned how to do that, once you've learned that for any anything, you can figure out your promotional aspects of it. Uh, this is one that I'm particularly fond of, which is called Futures and Benefits, which is basically a way to um, it's a it's a way to start engaging in a chapter vocabulary so that it's not just the president talking this way and it's just not the the vp of membership that's talking this way everybody is talking this way and everybody's features and benefits are different if you were in sales if you if you gave them nothing but benefit or if you gave them nothing but features and never told them the benefit they'll so, they'll go so what but if you uh, offer your feature and tell them what the benefit is. Um, this one is, um, this is actually a flip chart, but I'm gonna try and get to the downloadable. Oh, of course, it's not gonna download it. So we'll do it this way. This is uh, marketing and membership, and it's a little thing that we pieced together to try and talk about um, how to deal with guests when they arrive. So here's a membership and marketing plan, step one, step two, step three, step four, that's available for you to look at. It is a link on our website. And this is all about, you go out, you find a guest, you bring them in, and now what do you do? Do you have a plan to deal with, uh, do, you have, do you actually have a plan to deal with a guest when they get there? Will the guest book be ready? Will the guest book be updated? Will the guest book be in the correct order of, of rehearsal? Uh, do, you have, have you, do you have someone to greet them and take them around and, and uh, introduce them to leadership and introduce them to the director. Uh, do you have? Uh, do, do you remember just saying you're as welcome as the as the flowers in May? You know whatever it is that uh, that is going on. Uh, do you have a plan? And the more plan you have, and the the, be the the better you can execute it when somebody shows up, so that you're not just sitting there. Um, I, I'm going to share a horror story with you here in a second. And then I personally believe a lot of little successes eventually lead to big successes. So you need to celebrate your little ones uh, and your successes. Uh, we also have marketing tips. This seems so slow. Um, there's that complete look of chapter marketing. Here's a toolbox that you can use. 
with sample audience surveys and a future and benefit workshop and a SWAT your chapter workshop and uh, the marketing um, job description, which is atrocious, but it's there. Uh, and then monthly articles. So for instance, January of 2020, oh, I keep forgetting that, I don't know if it's going to do that. Okay, so and I, this basically tells you that in my estimation, January is the planning season. As a matter of fact, uh, now is the time to be planning your singing Valentines as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but there's a start of it and it gives you some ideas of what you, what you should be looking for and what you think you uh, you know, what you think you should be doing, and it helps, gives you ideas. Uh, the four P's are spelled out here with a flip book. Uh, think about SWAT. So a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about, I have written articles about, and it permeates this, this whole thing. And uh, so I would suggest highly that you have an opportunity, that you take the opportunity to actually take a look at this. We also have membership, and the membership person and the marketing VP person should work together closely, very closely, because you are overlapping. And then this is the one, I don't know what this is going to do. This is the new one, the new member orientation. Uh, the communications department just got this put together and released it in September. Um, I've been attending meetings with uh, district marketing people from uh, the whole United States. I don't think we have any Canadians in that group yet. Uh, but it is, um, we are discovering the more, the sooner you get new people involved in your process, the sooner you take them under your wing, the sooner you get them volunteering to do something, the sooner they become very active members of your chapter. And um, this is really long, so it's, worth, it's gonna take you a while to read it. But in that, the whole purpose is, here's ideas, come up with your own plan, do, do more, than what we're suggesting. And see if I can open it. This feels so funny because everything is so slow. And apparently it's not gonna open. Okay. So this is basically what it looks like. And in it, you're gonna find new member orientation introduction from the beginning, five steps to consider, a glimpse at your evergreen district. Yeah, uh, really quick, Greg, we aren't seeing that screen because when you shared screen, you specifically shared your uh, oh. website instead of your actual, your computer screen. So you just wanna share, um, okay. switch your, yeah. Well, let me read it to you. <laughs> the one thing that you're really going to, uh, that becomes important, this has come up uh, recently, and that is, why am I paying dues? There are a couple of new chapters where that has come up. And I wouldn't have even thought to include that. But we do have a thing is with, uh, that we're calling your dues in action. So we're giving you the opportunity uh, to actually take a look and you can actually tell a new member, well, your dues support the district and this is what the district does and your dues support your our chapter and this is what we do your dues support your district and this is what the district does and it gives them uh, an idea the interesting thing is that um, a lot of younger participants don't really understand why there needs to be dues at all and i uh, it, I, I, it, I was flabbergasted, but then that's my generation. Uh, we joined clubs, we joined societies, we paid dues. It was it was part of what we do. But uh, 
if you realize that you're after, you know, we're trying to convert 40 year olds to join us, they are millennials. And so their thought process and what they believe and what they think should happen uh, is not the same as those of us that are baby boomers. And so uh, this came up at uh, Star Harmony. And uh, I had a couple of people from Star Harmony say, does anybody know what the heck, what, where did the dues go? We're, you know, we're in the society, but what do they do? So that was the impetus that brought about this new member orientation. And I will tell you from personal experience that I started using it in federal way when I was the president. Everybody that came in, we went through a, a, a brief thing and uh, we started finding out about uh, about our potential new members. We started finding out uh, uh, what it is that they like to do. We found out about their skill set. So we tried to steer them into uh, uh, chapter organizational things that they like to do. I, I found a guy that really liked to do physical stuff. Guess who became my first riser chairman? Because he liked to do physical stuff. And um, and this new orientation increased our volunteerism greatly. And I walked in for a board meeting to discover the board meeting was in one room. The Singing Valentine's group, this was in November, the Singing Valentine's group was meeting and the show team was meeting all at the same time. And uh, it it was amazing. And I'm, I'm going, what did it? So I went to some of the newer guys and this was an all men's group. Went to the newer guys and said, how come, you know, what, what is it? Oh, it's just, you made us feel like we were a part of it. You made us feel like, like we really were an important part of the chapter and we wanted to give back. And so this new member orientation thing is something to really, really take a look at. That's a whole bunch of stuff and it's about 138, but I'm open to any questions right now. So you could, this is an AMA, you can ask me anything. <clears throat> Bob, go ahead. Nope. Okay, that means I am a dang good teacher and you guys know everything you need to know. There is no, a question. I think, I think it just means I need to go in, in on the website and do a bunch of reading and looking. <laughs> uh, Glenn, go ahead. Yeah, there is a question on the chat, and I have the same question uh, around uh, uh, members who aren't quite convinced to join BHS. So they're only chapter members. And then it's the question of insurance. So and I, that's a really good question to ask your secretary <laughs> or the that because the, the insurance situation has changed. A, uh, a guest, as I understand it, the guest is only covered for three uh, visits. After the third visit, they are no longer covered under any insurance through BHS or through the chapter. And now it's turning out that it's it appears that the chapter needs to have um, the, the chapter needs to have its own insurance. Right, and I know right, that, right. yeah, I was going to say, me, let me step in and clarify this one for you. Okay. The society has, uh, two insurance policies, which apply to every chapter. One insurance policy provides for, uh, general liability for if something happens. And the other one, other one is for, uh, injuries. If something, if someone is injured, all members of the chapter are covered in all activities, even going to and from the going to and from the um, rehearsal hall. Guests are covered for three visits. After the third visit, the the expectation is that they will either join or go away. That has been the longstanding expectation for low these many years. Reality is that we have people now who are becoming what we call perma guests, people who just like to come and sing, and they don't necessarily want to join, they just want to come sing. And some chapters are allowing this, and yet they have people who are there for extended periods of time. The problem is, because they are no longer covered by the BHS insurance, if that person falls off the riser or is, is uh, injured in some way, the chapter and its officers 
could be held liable for injuries. Now, that's the issue. Uh, we have raised this. We, the district, have raised this with the, uh, the, the society's uh, staff, and we have come up with a workaround. And if you have people who are in your chapter with your permission past the three-visit rule, then what you need to do is to send a letter, I'm sorry, an email to the chief financial officer of the society, CFO at barbershop.org, and give the details of the person and pay $12 for that person, and that person is covered for a year. They would be covered by our insurance. Now, what Greg was starting to get into was a different issue, which is directors and officers insurance. And I can talk about that if you need to, but it's not available at chapters yet. Okay. That's, that's, that was, I knew that there was something coming up and the district has been working on it for about uh, eight months now, uh, yeah. trying yeah. to get it sorted out. <laughs> so that sounds, you know, like very reasonable, obviously, you know, $12 for the year. And the question I have is, does your insurance situation also cover the Canadian chapters? Fair question. I don't know the answer to the question. Yeah, I'm I, sure it does, because in our chapter in Nanaimo, we've been paying a premium of about $1,000 a year for quite a while. And that's the liability in insurance. Okay. Yeah. That's helpful to know. Yeah, because so both, sure both not on, but I'm sure Jerry knows. Yeah, in both countries, they we pay BHS and they they put it the master of policy. Okay, then, thank yeah. you for that. We do have a question in the chat about um, how what's the best way to market to a younger generation? Get out in front of them and sing. How should we <laughs> approach out outreach to a younger generation specifically? Approaching outreach, right? Um, depending, on, I guess it depends upon what's younger. You know, to me, a 40 year old is younger to somebody else. You know, you want an 18 year old. Uh, the best way to to do that is to take a look at what you what you can do with the schools and get the uh, get the choir directors to kind of embrace what you're doing. Uh, there was uh, a, an article I saw in uh, Harmonizer about a, a group that was actually uh, they did several performances and they took that money and they they gave scholarships to the music departments. And so they they had that. Uh, also Idaho, I don't know if Sid's on the call, but Idaho just did a big youth uh, youth thing. Bellevue just did a big youth thing. Uh, it's presenting them with what we do. It's presenting them with the songs that we sing. It's with them, uh, it's that type of thing. If you are, uh, in, if you're looking for adult, members uh, that would be younger. Um, you need to keep in mind what's going on in their life at the time, because what's going on in a 20-year-old's life is not going on in a 30-year-old's life. And by the time people are, reach their late 30s, early 40s, they're becoming a little bit more settled and have a little bit more time to do some, some activities. And we come, under the, we, under, we come under the guise of entertainment money. Uh, it's entertainment, uh, but if you have a purpose for your chapter, that will also help impress young folks. If you say that we support um, we we support wounded warriors, or we support uh, children with uh, special needs, uh, or uh, or some charity, that that also appeals to them because they would like to feel like they're doing something for somebody. And um, so, oh, I just saw that none of my documents were, I was the only one seeing the documents. Um, but every, every group has to start, it's, it has to wrestle with that question of how they're gonna do it. And, and who is your target new member? Okay, we have current members, we have uh, and current members require retention, and then we have uh, we'd like to we'd like to capture some guys guys and gals back, some former singers. We'd like to capture them back, but they've already made up their minds, so that makes it a little bit different. So this idea of going out where people and singing where people are available and approaching them that way 
uh, is uh, is more. It's it's really old school. It's very old school, but it's got the it's got the human touch. Yeah. It has that that that. You know, I really care for you, and I really like you to come help us so that we can help these people. Does that make sense? I don't even know who asked it. Yeah, Greg, can I, ask, can I ask a question? Um, sure. Our membership is well up in years, and we want to get younger people in. Someone suggested that we should be going to high schools and and uh, trying to recruit at high schools. Is that usually done? Uh, we yeah, um, uh, federal way has uh, has tied in in several different ways uh, with it. But you have to realize uh, we've had when I was there, we had a couple of high school kids. But here's what happens: you get a high school kid, they get all jazzed about it. They're with you for their junior and senior year. Then they go to college and then you lose them. And so they, they, they're not as stable, but hopefully you planted the seed so that when they are older, they remember that they had such fun doing barbershop and they, at, and they find it. Uh, so as far as out and out recruiting for younger, the 30, 40 year olds are actually uh, in a prime demographic for that. And that's kind of in general, because you're going to find you're going to find people that are crazy for barbershop that are 12, and you're going to find people that are crazy for barbershop at 18. I didn't find it until I was 40, uh, 55, and I had done a whole lot of singing, uh, but it it doesn't hurt to go after them. But uh, you know we want to increase barbershop wherever we can, and we want to we want productive members within our chapter. And so you got to take a look at it as to, okay, this is what's going on in their life. And are they going to, are they going to be able to be really active uh, with it? Uh, Bill Hickman's got his hand up. I think Katie was first. Oh, Katie. Yeah, I, no, that's okay. I'm sneaky like that. Um, I, my biggest input on this particular topic would be to figure out who your target audience is. Because if you throw a giant net out there, you know, you're going to catch a couple people here and there, maybe. But if you figure out the age group that your particular ensemble is, you know, interested in welcoming in, um, whether it be the younger generation, like high school students or college students or late 20-somethings, 30-somethings, 40s, 50s and up, once you figure out the type of audience specifically that you're looking to attract, then you can go into the spaces and um, where those types of people are going to be congregating. I, I can say that for PDX Oregon, uh, specifically PDX Voices, we uh, look at having um, above 18 because the the types of things that as far as legal stuff with having guardians and parents and all the legal stuff around having underage members, we're just not set up for that right now. So for us, we have a preferred cut cutoff age right now of 18, uh, but we're looking specifically more at 20-somethings, 30-somethings, 40-somethings um, who have an equity of time and are looking for a hobby that is different than what they're already doing. We're trying not to pull from existing barbershop communities. Um, we like to talk to the people who are our friends outside of barbershop um specifically our new marketing member our new membership chair that's what it is our new membership chair natasha she loves singing karaoke so she talks about pdx voices every time she's singing at karaoke and just in the last year or so that she's been a member she's brought in five or six different guests from her normal karaoke crew Two of those guests are now members. Um, one of them is going to be, I, is Charlie the new something? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Charlie is going to be helping out on one of the teams, but Charlie is like the biggest, most brightest new barbershop person that you've ever seen in your life. If you saw Charlie at District, they were the one always wearing the barbershop straw hat. Um, Charlie was in the Harmony platoon. They were everywhere. And they had never heard about barbershop before Natasha spoke up about it at karaoke. So you never know where your next member is going to come from. You just got to talk about your love for the hobby. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm going to put my hand out. 
Uh, Bill. Okay, I have to be the uh, negative guy here. Um, I have spoken with a lot of music educators and taken courses from music educators about, about how to approach them at the high school level. High school uh, music educators have their entire year programmed before the September classes begin. Their entire year is laid out. And they, they, if you approach high school students as potential members, the music educator will step in front of you and prevent that from happening. These kids are tremendously stretched, much more so than any of us were when we were in high school. So adding, a asking them to join us is a very, very tough sell. That being said, some, would, some, some will do it and some would like to do it. And I will go with what Katie said. If you, have, if you have people who come in and they are under 18, they, by BHS rules, must be accompanied by a parent, not a general parent, their parent. Uh, we, are, we cannot act in local parentis. So the youth, if you have people who are under 18 in your chapter, you need to ensure that everybody who interacts with them, meaning your entire board, your music team, and everybody else, goes through the youth training from DHS. DHS maintains a master list on an annual basis. And if, it's, if you have not taken that training in the last 365 days, you must take it again. So high school students, while they seem like a fertile option for us because they're very excited and young kids are excited about singing, there are, you, you certainly can, but there are some very strict rules we have to live by. Okay, uh, and Bob Thomas, your hands up. Uh, Bob Cox. I'm sorry, up. Bob Cox has his hand That's up. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bob Thomas, Bob Cox. Yes, one's got hair. Bob, one you were, you were in the, you were, you, you guys swapped places. <laughs> oh, okay. So anyway, um, one of the things that we talk about on a regular basis is. As Katie said, and as Bill has said, is that know your target audience. And it's important that if you're in one of those choruses that are in those senior area or senior age brackets, then look for somebody that's just under that age bracket. You know, if you're 70, if your average age is 70, look for the guys that are 60. If your average age is 60, look for the guys that are 50. Um, going into the schools is a great idea. However, it has the drawbacks that if your chorus isn't singing well, they're not going to come in and have a positive experience. So you want to make sure that you offer that opportunity. Encourage, provide the teacher, the music teacher with music. Um, that's how I got started with Barbershop. When I was in high school, it was done on a dare. Uh, we were singing and walking down the hallway, and the teacher says, I dare you to sing in a, in a quartet. Well, being one that loves a dare, we went to our music teacher and we says, hey, do you have any music barbershop style? And he pulls out the, opens up the piano bench and the bats and the black widow spiders fly out. And he hands us his portfolio of music. Back in those days, there was an eight track with it and eight copies of music. And over a three day period, we learned five songs, went back and sang for him. And we had a quartet that was going, had no idea about a local barbershop chapter that was around us but the music was provided by a barbershop chapter. So that's a, a great way to get your foot in the door, provide some coaching if they're interested in doing that. But the kids in school, as Bill has said, and Katie has said also, is that they're busy already. They're playing sports, they're taking tests, they're getting ready for college, they're doing all these other things. And we don't wanna take away from that, but we wanna be able to plant a seed that says, hey, remember that time when that barbershop chorus gave us some music or helped us at a fundraiser or were the ushers at our show um, brought pizzas for us after a show or whatever? Those things are positive things that we can do to reach out to these young men and women. The, um, I, I want to share a story with you. This takes place in 1960-something. 1960 1967, uh, I just graduated from high school. And I was looking for a musical outlet. I had sung all the way through school. And uh, my choir director was Dale Leggett. And uh, as he and I were talking, and he said, you know, you've been singing Barbershop for the last two years. I said, what? He said, yeah, remember the, the, all the music that the, the boys, uh, boys choir sang that was uh, uh, called Music for Men? That was all from Spebsquire. And I go, who? What? 
And uh, he said, did you enjoy that? And I said, oh, yeah, that was fun because the, the harmonies were so tight. And he said, well, here, I'm going to use their name, too. Uh, I want you to go visit Tacoma Vocal, or sorry, Tacoma Totemares. So I'm, uh, and I, when I graduated, I was 17. So this 17-year-old trekked across Tacoma and found the church where they, there, where they were. And I walked in and said, I'm uh, interested in, you know, I'm just here to observe. And they paid no attention to me. They didn't invite me to sing. It was a special night. I didn't know that, but they had quartet night. So all I experienced was four or five different groups of men of four standing around in a, in a circle, singing to each other and ignoring me. <laughs> uh, there was no plan for having a guest. There was no plan in how to recruit me. There was nothing. And I waited until they had snacks, grabbed a couple of cookies and left and decided that barbershop was not for me. I was 1967. I found Barbershop in 2004 from a brand new group who was very welcoming. And that, unfortunately, that group doesn't exist anymore, but it was Columbia River Chordsmen in Tri-Cities. And they welcomed me. And before I knew it, I was singing in a registered quartet. I was singing in a registered VLQ. I was singing in the chorus and I was on the board and almost lost my wife over the deal. <laughs> but... Uh, there's a difference when there's a plan and you're welcoming and you're bringing and, and you're inviting people into there, you need to treat them like the guests they are. And you need to realize the value they bring to you. But more importantly, um, actually, it's more important that you understand the value that they're bringing to you rather than what the value of the, of the chapter. But it's all got to work together uh, symbiotically. And there needs to be a plan. And the last thing you need is, is, is somebody to come in and greet a guest and say, oh, hi, you're new here? Oh, great. Um, let me see if I can find somebody who knows what's supposed to happen now. And one of the things that you can do is you can actually practice at Federal Way. Uh, I selected uh, three people a night, and we put a, st a sticker on them that said guest. And they came in as a, as a guest. And then at the end of the chapter meeting, they reported back to how they experienced it. It was an eye-opener. It was a real eye-opener because we weren't very welcoming, but we became very welcoming as we went. Scott, I see your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, check up on that. So did I hear correctly that parents are required to attend with kids under 18? Yes. Yes, you did. That is that is the requirement that's in the VHS youth policy. Parent, the, it can't be a parent bringing a group of kids. It has to be the parent. Ah, but the parent doesn't have to remain at the... No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They, they, they have to be there while the child is in is in with us. No, no, okay. no parent is going to want to drop off a drop off a uh, a minor with a group of uh, middle to older age men and walk away. We have. That are actually doing that right now in our club. Yeah, understand that. Go go up to the go up to the uh, BHS website. Look for the youth policy. It's it's crystal. You can download it. Okay, the that manual is there. That changed from eighteen months ago. Then okay. Yep. Well, so it, I'm going to get it right now and put it in in the uh, uh, for you. I'll put it right here. It's right, uh, it's two o'clock, and obviously I. We, we skimmed over the lo a lot of stuff, but please look at the website, view some of the videos uh, that are available, uh, and that's going to take you to uh, the Evergreen District uh, YouTube page anyway, and there's all kinds of stuff there, and there's entertainment stuff and uh, uh, old quartets and that type of thing. I really appreciate your time, and I really appreciate, appreciate all the input. I do want to pass along to you that I started on this endeavor in 2022 because uh, COVID had basically destroyed my singing 
and uh, for, a, for a lot of personal reasons. And this was a way that I could give back and I could help. I want you to know that I am available for one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations with you, with your chapter. Uh, I am available to do whatever I can uh, to help you succeed. And I just want you to know that I do have a passion for each one of your chapters, even though I may not know all of them. I have a passion to be available. And uh, most of you should have gotten an email with a, uh, an attack or a link to the, to the PowerPoint thing. That was hurried and rushed and very, very, very difficult. But uh, the best I could do in an hour. And if you need me, I'm available. So please take advantage. And I'm available as, as close as your phone and a Zoom call. Thank you. Well, well done, Greg. Thank you so There's much. There's a reason why you are Barbershopper of the Year, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I do that too? <laughs> did anybody have any closing questions for Greg? We are able to bleed into Sid's session a little bit. So, Katie, this is Bob again. I, you know, throughout all of these sessions today, I've kind of emphasized the importance of communications and sharing of ideas. Uh, Bob Thomas is going to be heading up a team that's focused around membership. And what we'd like to be able to do is, after the first of the year, is set up a I'm going to try for just a monthly basis now of just being able to bring in those individuals who are serving in a marketing opportunity or a marketing program or a marketing VP position and a membership, not and or, but both either or uh, positions so that we can sit and discuss membership ideas. Within each of our chapters, there are some great ideas and success, and success stories of what chapters have done or are doing to attract new members and how to take care of members, how to make sure that they get oriented, how to make sure that they get involved, how to make sure that your chapter is accepting them as new members, not just a guest that walks in the door and accepting them as a member of your barbershop family. So what, we are going, what we're looking for is a couple more people to be able to help on Bob's team um, we've got three or four that have already said, yes, I'm willing to help. And it's just a matter of just maybe going out and visiting a chapter or communicating with a chapter on a regular basis or leading a discussion team within your local area. Um, we've got a lot of great ideas within every person that's been in the president's class, the secretaries, the treasurers, and now the marketing and PR classes and membership classes and being able to just share ideas. Um, that is going to be the success for where we're going to be growing this coming year. So Bob Thomas will be reaching out to some of you. I'll be reaching out to some of you. Our goal this year on the chapter development side of the house is to visit every chapter within the Evergreen District in some way, shape, or form, whether if it's, you know, if we can't do it in person that we want to be able to discuss with your board and your membership some of the things that are happening around the district. That 70% that Bill talked about earlier is so important that we're able to reach them on a regular, regular basis to let them see the value of membership. Let them understand the fellowship and, and sisterhood and brotherhood that goes along with our organizations. So be on the lookout for those things. There's gonna be articles in the timber. There's gonna be articles in the green line. There's gonna be articles coming from each of the members of our leadership team. Um, and we'll be looking forward to visiting you and coming out and helping your chapter grow this year. Thanks, Katie. Thank you so I, much. Can I take one more second? Go uh, for it. I want to, uh, the reason that our website is set up with marketing and membership together is because prior to uh, 2024, we did not have a chapter development person. We didn't have a membership person. And so it was, uh, it we saw a need um, to try and tie the two together. I am so pleased that Bob is going to be on there uh, concentrating on membership. Uh, and I still will be available. I'm, I'm the incoming 
uh, Evergreen Communications Director uh, for 2024, but I will still be uh, dealing in uh, in my first love, which is marketing and successful chapters. So, uh, Bob, welcome on, welcome aboard. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Greg. Um, really excited to have you on this year. Wish we could have had you on this last one in March too, because that was a lot of really wonderful information. Um, you also teach at the uh, Harmony College Northwest these marketing classes more fleshed out, right? Uh, yeah. Um, I My first year was last year, but I'm, I'm anticipating that I will be teaching again next year. Uh, I took a, a look at two specific things. I looked at uh, uh, a SWOT analysis and how to do it and how to develop a personal elevator speech uh, right. so that you could go out and in less than 30 seconds tell somebody exciting stuff about your chapter. And uh, so some of that will be flushed out again uh, next year because I'm planning on teaching. That's great. So yes, definitely uh, sign up for some of that stuff when we get the Harmony College Northwest stuff coming out next June. Um, there's probably also going to be, you know, little stuff heading in your chapter leader news and in green sheets. So keep an eye on that because we're nothing if we're not members and families, right? So if we all quit, then there's no Barbershop Harmony Society left. So we got to make sure we're letting people know that we exist and uh, welcoming them to our families. 